Hey everybody, this is Nicholas Live and with me is uh, Jose Aguinaga. He is a business, crypto business expert, at least I consider him, but he's actually better known as a technical advisor for mybit.io. And um, dude, it's a pleasure talking to you. You're coming to us from Zug, Switzerland, also known as the Crypto Valley, right? That's correct, Nicholas. Uh, thanks you for having me here. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty cool. So you basically, um, you did lots of startups uh, before and most of them are very, very tech savvy. And um, especially uh, mybit.io, which is one of my favorite projects at the moment, which I'm tracking very closely. So can you tell me more about your background, what you did before? And I'm just curious, when did you get into crypto in the first place? Right, yeah, by all means. So my background comes from probably working as, a, as an engineer, as a web engineer for a few a few startups, both in, in, in Switzerland. And I did a little bit of time in San Francisco, uh, a little bit of time in Mexico, where I'm originally from. And I got into crypto probably around one year, one year and a half, especially because I, I started um, getting very involved into cryptography on, on, on itself. And then eventually it was natural for me to get related with blockchain companies. And I started... Um, well, advising and supporting uh, my beat for roughly half a year ago right now. That's cool. And you were telling me, it's, it's amazing how some places in the world like uh, Zook, Switzerland, which are basically, it's almost a little underground Silicon Valley just for crypto, right? Yeah, so the exciting thing about Zook, so Zook is a very small city. I, I've been living here roughly for over a year. And in general, Switzerland is like a very, it's, it's I will say, the capital of finance. And, and, and I will say in many, in many ways, like financial technical development in, in, in many areas. But Zug, the city, which is, is, is located in the German side of Switzerland, has been focused um, for a few time, for some time now, in blockchain technologies. And it's been building a, an entire framework in order to provide um, a very welcoming environment for blockchain and, and crypto companies. So it, the, the population is around 32,000 people. Really? However, yeah, it's super small, but, um, but in general, the government, um, it, the, the entire ecosystem is, is being shaped in a way that it's, it's, it's a, yeah, it's trying to become the next Silicon Valley. And that's why the, the term Crypto Valley was coined around a year ago. Um, the moment that, for instance, the, the suit government has started to accept, um, so I can register myself in the in the government using using one of the crypto companies uh, here. You port, you can buy real estate here with Bitcoin. There's a few uh, a few development and venture capital centers here that are very interested into the crypto ecosystem, and that's why it's called the, the Crypto Valley. And you just told me this the other day. I could not personally believe it that you can actually pay taxes with crypto to the government, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it was since 2016 they implemented that feature. I think when they reported it back then, only journalists were, were trying to do that. It was still kind of a novelty. Um, but nowadays, I know people that, you know, that have, uh, um, they have, of course, uh, gained some money, been, been doing some trading, doing um, selling and purchasing. Uh. Meeting. My bad, I'm uh, mad you cut off, but uh, keep going, you were saying? <laughs> no worries. So I was saying that, um, that, you know, I know some people that by now they have fill in their taxes, oh, I, I incur some gains in, into crypto trading. Um, they, are, they, they had been able to pay some, some of their capital gains in, in, in Bitcoin and things like that, um, that, you know, it will not be possible in not, other, not only in not any other cities, but in other countries in the world that are just catching up to trying to see what this crypto movement is going on. That's huge. And you personally, how long are you in crypto? So myself, I've got involved with like a as I said, like uh, over a year ago, probably almost two years when I started studying. So my background is in computer science. I'm, I'm a web engineer. I program um, every day in my life <laughs> like for the past eight, nine years. And I started getting very involved into cryptography, which is, is you know, the science of encoding and decoding uh, messages in, 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 into multiple ecosystems and, and, and you know, protocols. And a lot of people focus crypto and, you know, the, the, the currency on its own, but it, it has, I mean, cryptocurrencies and all these blockchain technologies are actually um, the mixes of, of multiple technologies like peer-to-peer -peer network, game theory, you know, how you reward people in, in the network and, you know, cryptography, right? So I finished some studies in cryptography um, over a year ago. It started getting, getting very involved into public key systems, uh, encoding, uh, zero knowledge encryptions, gave a few, a few talks and a few workshops in, in Switzerland and in other countries about it. And for me, it was just natural to find interest into the blockchain ecosystem because it's 
Um, I think it, it's the future in terms of the centralized technologies are, are the future for sustainable and, and sustainable development in, in technical in the technical world and in technical startups. So for me, it was very natural to to get involved there. I, I did you know very very seldom, but were for some time trading. Um, got involved a little bit in the Ethereum ecosystem. I, I invest a little bit in, in, in some coins here and there. And lately, the most the most important development I've been advising um, my bit, the my bit um, the an investment an investment company for Internet of Things, um, to also not only from a technical perspective, but also how to settle themselves in in Switzerland because I've, I've been getting very very involved in the. Switzerland uh, network for for crypto companies. So you know, just guiding, setting up an office, registering uh, multiple multiple services here, getting getting everything into Swiss compliance. That's pretty awesome. Now, someone of your skill and lots of experience, especially in the technical knowledge, you're a very vaunted man when it comes to um, any startup or job opportunity. Uh, what made you settle with uh, with MyBit and and helping uh, their team? <laughs> so flattery will take you nowhere, but but thank you for for the compliments. I'm definitely I have a, a have a a very deep background, especially on 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 financial tech startups, right? So um, to me, my profile fits very well in companies that want to manage other people's wealth and want to increase wealth, and you know in general anything that is financial related. My bid is very interesting because it brings. So a lot of people think. Um, or see the crypto crypto ecosystem as a very well cryptocurrency ecosystem as a very easy way to get you know re- get rich uh, fast right and I don't think that's sustainable as the latest as the latest um, you know developments of, of, of multiple currencies have have happened but my bid has a, has in the, in its mindset the ability to 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 allow people to invest in things that are sustainable in things that are moving into the future to help um, you know not only um, general problems in, in terms of uh, renewable energies, um, autonomous vehicles, but also um, bring bring that, those tools to to anybody that is willing to invest in into those those ecosystems. Because um, myself working in the financial industry, I know that those opportunities are only for people that have a lot of money. That people, you know, that are if you want to invest yourself in, let's say, a solar farm. Um, you need to reach through a fund. You need to maybe uh, bring a, a very big amount of money, or just have some connections there, and you only get a profit of that after a very long time. Exactly. And, well, yeah. You know, and and you know, and they take a very big cut. I mean, it's not very different from you know brokerageing some investments that you know you, you just get diluted over time. Whereas my bid using the centralized technology allows anybody you know that it's involved in the in the in the cryptocurrency world. To, to be able to perform investment in, in very interesting in very interesting projects that are around the world and using using their token as a utility to be able to you know to perform um, um, to perform an investment on, on a specific projects I know by now my bid has a few partnerships with, with a, um, a few companies in, in Dubai a few companies in Switzerland and that is that is what it, it, it was for me very 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 interesting to get involved with now, of all the possibilities uh, to fund um, as a simple uh, mortal or somebody who's not rich, right? Um, what are you looking forward to the most? Um, to me, so I will say renewable energy is a very exciting thing for me to get involved. I think um, so. One of the problems that it's currently in the you know in, in the blockchain world, if you want to call it cryptocurrency, is that you know. The, the proof of work uh, process that it's it's involved around many projects, specifically Bitcoin, is very expensive. It consumes a lot of energy, right? Oh, I yeah. think by now, uh, mining Bitcoin is just how much uh, like the global network consumes as much energy as Iceland or something like that, right? Whoa. So we're uh, as a community, we're desperately looking for ways for alternative ways to make that sustainable, right? So uh, renewable energy is something that should be really on the top of our priorities. Um, and you know, as 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 a general generation, you need to be something that be aware of, right? Uh, another project that I'm very interested in is is um, Bitcoin ATMs. I think um, it's very challenging for people not in being not directly involved in the in the Bitcoin world to or the crypto world to be able to perform any any sort of trade with it. It's just sometimes that it's something that I think is still. Um, preserved to people that are very technically advantaged or that are, you know, up to cutting edge technologies. Whereas something as a, as a Bitcoin, like ATMs is something, is a very 21st world invention that allowed us 
to, you know, perform uh, transactions with something that we really understand, you know, fiat currency. So I mean, it's something that I'm also very excited to, to know. And I will say for me, uh, autonomous vehicles is also a very interesting project that is something more long term. I mean, being able to 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 invest in, in a company that that is developing those things, I think maybe 20 years from now, it's going to be illegal to drive. So that, that's that's just where we're yeah, going. Wow. That's where we are. You know, that's where we were heading. So it will. It's very interesting to you know use companies like maybe to be to be able to get uh, yourself early in these kind of companies. Well, I don't know. I actually, I personally think like if you look in the modern uh, world, we are all addicted to energy. I mean, what would you do without electricity? There, like, yeah. You everything you interact with daily requires electricity to function, and people don't just realize how important that is. And what happens if we don't have any more fuel sources? So we do have to like rely on um, renewable energy like solar. And it's, it's the importance is just being overlooked. I think it's the most important thing in this the 21st century. Like electricity powers everything, right? Right. And, and not only, I mean, first of all, we wouldn't be having this interview without electricity, <laughs> right? <laughs> so you're definitely right. But um, it's not only, to me, it's not only about the... the being sustainable from from how where do we get our energy because as you as you correctly pointed out um, we we need energy for everything and our current food sources sometimes are debatable because you know some of them are just you know are just not long term solutions that in coming generations are going to be using uh, but also they damage the environment as we know so to me it's not only important to find sustainable um, sources or renewable sources of energy. But it's also um, being able to decentralize those sources, right? So what I what I mean by that is, as of today, you know, when you develop this technology to capture to capture this energy to be able to distribute it and sell, um, if it's something that it helps everybody in the world and it help, it's helping, as you mentioned, anybody that consumes energy, this kind of technology should should be should allow anyone to be to participate in in being able to gather that. And what I mean by that is, by, is what I mean is that initiatives like my bid allow um, or push projects that you know is able to anyone to be able to participate in these projects so we don't want solar energy shouldn't be uh, just to give you an example i mean i we, we pick solar energy because it's something something everybody can rest but this kind of source of energy shouldn't be limited to people that is able to capture and you know sell it again because then we only have monopolies of people, you know, capturing technology and selling again. And we're not very different from, you know, just having very little companies, very little industries able to, to harvest and benefit from this energy. Um, we, we need to decentralize that, right? So we, we there is uh, one movement that my bid is behind, which is the, the um, Open Solar Foundation. And they want to not only, you know, sponsor projects that are involved in that, but also um, make sure that, you know, solar energy should be open by anybody. You, there should not be any, any company in the world that be able to privatize the sun, you know? And I think at the moment we are going to be running out of full sources in the future, that might happen. So we need as, as a generation, uh, as the current blockchain generation, we need to think those things beforehand and make sure that we support projects that are, are able to, you know, take an stance from the very beginning. Yeah, that is so true. Uh, and it's kind of inspiring, right? Because it's the world uh, needs to be you know, decentralized, not just uh, money, right? There's so many other more important aspects and and people you know, are getting used to the idea with you know, decentralized currency, but we need to you know, start decentralizing everything else that's, you know, that can't be monopolized, right? Right. It's, I it's mean, it's just not sustainable. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, well, so you mentioned, you mentioned growth currencies, but I mean, as you, as you currently point out, we... We need things, uh, the internet being one of them, energy is being one of them, um, you know, transportation, definitely. I mean, we are very excited about, about uh, you know, the internet of things because a lot of these companies are, are trying to make sure there's not big monopolies that, that you know, are, are, are driving everything. Exactly. And I think that's a beautiful way to end it. Um, Jose, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And um, as well, you have everyone. this extensive knowledge and we can just talk for days right but i'll <laughs> see you guys again though and uh, i'll be talking to a uh, more awesome team members of my bit very soon um because, and you know what i'll actually see you guys in person um later sometime in march so i think we'll try to do a really big interview with all you guys together uh, last time i had lots of fun and i'm, I'm sure we have we'll have lo lots of fun in march again right 
For sure. Yeah, looking forward to talk then. Hey, uh, thanks. Uh, this, has, this has been uh, Jose Aguinaga, um, a technical advisor of my bit. And um, thank you guys for watching. And a quick shout out to Crypto Daily, who is in the live chat. He was the first one to comment. That's, that's awesome. And uh, if you guys aren't already subscribed, you should definitely do that. Enable notifications so you can join and we'll ha have fun with us uh, on the live chat right now. Or you can text um, if you're even in the US uh, to the number below and get notifications before we go live. Thanks, man. No worries. Have a nice one, man. See ya.